And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to do something a little different, as I always say on a Saturday night, but this one's actually pretty different. You know, as you know, I'm a red wine kind of guy, I, and I have tried different wines in the past, but uh, this one, this one I'm doing is a, uh, is a rosé, and... Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure about this. Plus, it's a uh, sub $10 rosé, and I'll, I'll give you the, pr the actual price in just a few moments. But we're going to try it out and see if it works. I'm a little apprehensive about it. We'll give it a try. Uh, if I don't like it, this could be a short show. Now, I do have some backups, but uh, I, I don't want to open them tonight. But uh, if I like it, who knows? We'll see where it goes we'll see where it goes anyway if you're joining me for the first time this is drink with rick this is a uh stream of consciousness zero went there kind of went off for a moment this is a stream of consciousness kind of show and being one i do have a few show notes and we do have things we talk about but look this is a show about you and me and the wine and uh when you join me in the chat this show could go anywhere. It could go anywhere, as we have found on many episodes in the past. So uh, please join me in the chat, and let's see where it takes us tonight. Anyway, if you're joining me now, uh, of course, you can join us on our Facebook page at Drink With Rick. You can join me also uh, on YouTube. We're live on YouTube at Drink With Rick. You can join me on Twitch, Twitch, which is basically growing the, the audience is growing on twitch quite a bit and uh I, i'm i'm pleased with that i'm pleased with that and uh, you can join us on twitter yes at drink with rick now twitch is is drink with rick one drink with rick the number one on twitch uh twitter it's at drink with rick and you can watch me live on twitter i don't know if too many people that actually watch a an hour and a half to two hour wine stream on twitter but hey if you're into that Tweet, tweet me, and uh, I'll keep an eye on that. I'll keep an eye on those tweets. Also, you can watch live on our website at drinkwithrick.com. Uh, that uh, does not have a chat on um, embedded on the site, but if you click on the post for that episode, uh, there's a comment box in there, and you can send me comments, and I will respond in kind, as I have in the past, and, and I will continue to do so. So, uh, also, the podcast. Don't want to forget the podcast. The podcast goes up on Sunday nights at, uh, excuse me, Monday nights, Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, exactly. And you can uh, catch it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, uh, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, Deezer, uh, Blueberry, Blueberry.com. We're on Blueberry on your favorite uh, smart speaker. And uh, you just just say, you know, just give the, the wake word, uh, A-L-X-E-A or whatever it is, <laughs> and say play Drink With Rick podcast, and, uh, and she should be able to play the latest episode. And if not, let me know. Uh, also, uh, by email, uh, you can subscribe by email to the show, and every time a new episode drops on, on Monday night, you'll get an email notification with the latest episode. And, and don't worry, we don't do anything with your emails, okay? We don't do anything with any uh, any of your uh, information, okay, other than just sending you links to the show. So anyway, um, you know, of course, you can also email me directly at rick at savoyamedia.com. That's rick at s-a-v-o-i-a-m-e-d-i-a.com with any anything you want to talk about. Uh, tell me if you like the show, if you don't like the show, anything you'd like to see different on the show, anything you'd like for us to do uh, or try. If you have a wine recommendation, send me that. Uh, if you have free wine, <laughs> if you have a wine you'd like to me to try, send me that. Now, that's fine. I will do, in fact, if you're a winery uh, or distributor, and we have had some send us, uh, you know, over wines before uh, to try, I promise I'll give it a fair review. It'll be a fair and honest review. So send one over, and I'll, and I'll do that. And so uh, what else do we have here? Oh, yes. Oh, we have exciting things going on uh, with the show. We're, we're going to be uh, – I'm going to talk to you about a giveaway. We're going to be doing a giveaway for another book like we did last, uh, last month. And I'm going to tell you about a film that I'm going to be premiering next week. Uh, we're actually going to premiere it live on Drink with Rick on this show next Saturday night. So please be around there for that. We've got some birthdays to toast. We have, uh, well, what do we have here? National days and all kinds of fun. 
So join me here for tonight. So here is the one. Let me check first before I go any further to see if we've got anyone in the chat just yet. You people kind of saunter into the chat later on, but let me check. Uh, oh, Captain Suisse One is, is uh, in the chat on Twitch. He says, hi, Rick. Hi, right back at you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how you're uh, tell me what you're drinking or what you're not drinking or what you'd like to be drinking or what you'd like to see me drink. And uh, if I can afford it, I'll see if I can pick up one, too, and, and give it a try. And uh, But I'm glad you're here, Captain Sweet One. Any, anybody else uh, going uh, in, let's see, YouTube? YouTube's quiet, usually. And I am going to be checking with Twitter because... We had an issue last week with Periscope, and it was actually it was actually my fault. I saw the error come up during the show that it, it couldn't stream Periscope could, couldn't stream to Twitter, and so we didn't have that show going last week. But um, the reason was because I had inadvertently I had done made some changes with OBS, the open broadcast software that I used to to stream the show, and. Um, when uh, I, I did that, it, it reset some of the settings, and I caught most of them, but I missed one setting on one uh, audio track, and uh, that's what caused that issue. I went back and reviewed it, and I fixed that, and it should be wor it's, It looks like it's working tonight, so we'll see how it goes. Let me know if you have any issues seeing this stream. I definitely want to know. So uh, this is the wine that we're going to be drinking tonight. This is a... Uh, La Sense de Vente, this is a, um, it's a rosé, as I mentioned before. This is a French wine, for all my French friends, uh, uh, in, uh, in, on Twitch especially. And um, it's a pays doc, it's, it's from France, imported in, and it is, um, some of it, it's a mix of uh, Sasson and Merlot. And we've talked about that in the past, on the wine streams in the past, how some of the rosés are like that. There, there are a couple of different blends. This one is a Sasson and a Merlot. And this was recommended to me uh, by my good friends at Wine Store just, uh, uh, just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. I, this was a last-minute thing that I picked up. And um, they, it, it's... I, I said, well, I'll, I'll give it a try. I, I told him I call. I said I need something to review for Saturday night, and I said, oh, okay, we have something for you. So we're gonna we're gonna give it a try. That's my phone going off. I don't know what that's all about. Um, this is the backside. I'm gonna read the backside just in case you can't see it. It says uh, Le Sans de Vent, uh, Pays Doc, and um, imported by uh, Ar Artesian Enterprises in Greensboro, North Carolina. This is, there's not much on the back. You got the government warning, which is standard issue. Uh, it's a rosé wine. Alcohol is 12.5% by volume in the 750 milliliter bottle. And it does say it's 50% Sasson and 50% Merlot. So this is a half and half. And um, I, I did, there, there's not a whole lot of this on the internet. There's not a whole lot of information on the internet, but I will say that this wine, uh, what I did pick up, it was in French on their site, and uh, this is translating from French, Google, thanks to Google Translate. It says, crop cooling, drainage, and delicate pneumatic pressing to obtain a pale color. Accommodation after a night of settling. Slow fermentation at controlled temperature, 16 to 18 degrees centigrade. Racking, then short aging and early bottling to preserve the fruit. And that's how they, they went through the uh, winemaking process. So... Um, it says, uh, it, the company, it says it pairs with uh, grilled white meats, fresh salads, and uh, fruit mousses. Now, this is what I have tonight. I'm, I have this to pair it with tonight. Assortment, a couple of desserts, actually. <laughs> like, I really need to be eating that. But uh, we had, we had uh, some steak for dinner. This is not really a steak wine. This is really more for white meats, uh, maybe chicken, turkey, pork, things like that, uh, fish, some, some fish. Um, so what I have here tonight is I have some chicken, some, some this is, let me see if I can get a closer shot of this. This is a, uh, I think this is a, a grilled chicken here that my wife Chi made tonight. It's, um, it's actually hibachi chicken, I believe. And then we have some turkey, some smoked turkey, which may work okay with this. I have a couple of, um, light, uh, cheeses, I have, well, actually, one of them's a light cheese. This is a very soft mozzarella. This might work okay with it. And a cheddar. I think this is a medium, um, uh, I think this is a medium cheddar. Some crackers to clear the palate with. 
and uh, and some desserts because desserts tend to go well with these wines and rosé a good rosé can make a pretty decent dessert wine this should go actually a lot of rosés are often served with with appetizers or d'oeuvres and things like that so uh, I think with this platter that we have I think it'll be all right well we'll find out we'll find out as we go along uh, as we uh, are about to open this bottle of wine and this one is not a screw cap like I normally have but as we open this uh, let me check the chat one more time see what's going on uh, kind of quiet out there everyone's waiting with bated breath for the for the wine uh, I'm wait, waiting with bad breath to see if uh, this is going to taste any good <laughs> that was a joke I don't, it's okay self-deprecating humor there so let's go ahead and open up this Let's see if I can get this thing around it. There we go. Oh, it didn't do very well, did it? This foil color cutter is not slippery. It's slippery because the wine's chilled. That's one of the things about this wine is that uh, they did recommend that this wine be chilled between 10 and 12 degrees centigrade, which comes out to about between 50 and 54 degrees, or uh, something like that uh, degrees of uh, in, in uh, Fahrenheit and uh, let me go ahead and use my it's been a while since I've actually had to, to uh, use my use my uh, corkscrew on a one this this bottle is kind of slippery so I'm having a little bit of a time with it because it was I had to quick chill it a little bit so there we go a slippery bottle here we go but we'll get it out we have to. we must get it out we got it out okay so this is the wine and of course to pour it in the glass i have my trusty veneto aerator from the veneto wine lover set which by the way you can actually pick up from amazon there's a link on my site at uh, actually, there's some banners on my site for this thing, and right now I'm not making anything off of it, so it's just, you know, you can click on the banner, it's it's not really an affiliate link at the moment, so um, if, you, if you want to purchase one of these, they're actually pretty reasonable, and they're really, uh, really decent, decent aerators. Anyway, to, uh, to hold the wine, I have my trusty Galway Genuine Crystal, Irish Crystal Glass from Ireland, given to me, uh, imported and, and given to me uh, by my employers at buytobearadios.com. We're going to pour a little bit of this wine in the glass, just a little bit for starters, just a little bit. One, to, to give it a chance to, to breathe well and, and, and get the aromas and give it a fair tasting. The other reason is so that if I don't like the wine, I don't have to pour any more into it than I have to, right? Like I said, I am not really. Now we have tried some rosés. Okay, we had a tr we tried a couple. Uh, what was the last one we did? We did that was no, that was a Sauvignon Blanc. There was another rosé. Ah, Montgravat, the Montgravat, which I actually really enjoyed. It was actually a pretty good rosé. We're gonna give this a little swirl, and uh, I'm not catching too much in aromas from here. Mmm. Pear, right off the nose. Some pear. So we got some pear, and what else do we have? Uh, maybe a little bit of strawberry there. Let me see. A little flowery, uh, fairly fruity, mostly uh, like fruits like uh, like uh, like pear and and strawberry. That's pretty much what I'm smelling here. Let's give it a taste. Whoa, yeah, that's interesting. I can taste the pear and the strawberry. Um, maybe a hint of peach in there, too. Maybe a little hint of peach. Let me see. So pear. Actually, the peach is getting a little bit stronger here. The peach and the strawberry notes are in there, definitely. Some floral notes to it. Um, a few floral notes. Uh, it's it's uh, kind of mouth watering actually. It's you know what it's kind of a 
nice uh, nice wine. It kind of needs a nice taste in the mouth after I, I swallow. It, it's not a lot. Well, it does linger a little bit. The, the, it, it does have a little bit of a lingering finish. I'll try that again. Yeah, it's very light. This is very light. First of all, it's light body, which is not surprising because it is all, you know, ab absolutely. It is a white wine, of course. Very light bodied, but it's also uh, fairly light tasting. It's not, now it's not watery or anything like that. It's, it's very, it, it has a lot of flavors to it. It's full flavored, not watery at all, but it does kind of look a little on the watery side. I'm not seeing a lot of, uh, this wine does not have a lot of legs to it, if you know, uh, if you know what I mean. It's, it doesn't have, there are not a lot of tears in it. It just kind of, now this could be the glass because we, you know, sometimes when you wash the glass in the dishwasher with some of those uh, rinsing agents and things like that, it'll do that. It, it'll, it'll leave kind of a, a film on the glass that, that will prevent that sort of thing. So I can't, I can't say that this is really a fair assessment as to whether or not they're legs or not because this has been machine washed. This or washed in the dishwasher. This glass has has not been hand washed, so it's quite possible it's just no legs because uh, of the glass itself, and not really because of the wine. <clears throat> that could be. That's very possible. So to be fair about it, I can't really uh, I can't really say that it doesn't have legs. It just doesn't have legs in this glass. <laughs> okay, um, but it's it's not bad. It's once again it's very light tasting. It goes down light. It's dry. It is dry. It's not a sweet wine. Okay, and some people think of rosés and white wines as being very sweet wines, and there are quite a few sweet wines. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not really a big fan of rosés in general because I have had rosés that were actually fairly sweet, and I'm not I'm not a, a, a big on sweet wine. I'm big, but I'm not big on sweet wines. <clears throat> so. Um, so this is actually, uh, it's, it's tastes a little refreshing to me, actually, I, I have to say. It's a bit refreshing. And uh, I, do, I do like the, the um, fruit notes in it. I do like the fruit notes. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm still tasting the strawberry. The peach is becoming more pronounced as a flavor as I start drinking this wine. So actually, I, I kind of, I like it. I mean, it's okay. It's it's all right. I mean, um, if you like a rosé, you'll probably really like this wine, uh, just on its own. But we were going to pair it with foods. But before we do that, let me check back in the chat and see what's going on in the chat. Uh, still a little early. Uh, a lot of folks don't get into the chat until like the uh, the. Uh, the end of the first half hour. We're getting into the first 40 minutes of the show or something. Uh, so I can just kind of sit around here and just stare at the camera or whatever and like this for, for, for 40 minutes until people start showing up. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that because people watch this later as well. Some people do. And of course, this is a podcast that goes out and I, I've got to keep I've got to keep the chat going, on, you know, even if it's one-sided on the podcast. Um, because people are listening to me and who wants dead air okay i don't so let's go and enough of my rambling let's go ahead and pair it with some foods or am i putting this off am i hesitating am i procrastinating putting off tasting this with the wines you be the judge i i will say that uh yeah well well let me clear the palate a little bit with some water always keep some water handy Always keep water handy, especially if you're drinking the red wines and if you're prone to headaches from red wines. And we've talked about that before. We've talked about why that happens. Drink water in between the glasses of wine. If you're going to be drinking wine, take some water. A little more to sip. Take, you know, take, you know, four ounces of water or something like that in between glasses of wine. That'll help you pre prevent a lot of the headaches. Uh, so that, that's a tip from Drink with Rick that you can you can use. So uh, let's try it first. We're going to try it with first. Ah, let's try it with the chicken. We'll try it with the chicken first. And um, this is a hanabachi chicken that my wife made this evening. So we'll give it a try. It's actually no, oh, this is really good. Mm. Great chicken. 
Mm, I love this. We're gonna try it with this. This actually might work pretty well. I like this. Mm, very good. Battle Daddy 19's in the chat. Good to see you, Battle Daddy 19. Um, and um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> call me an old uh, call me an old fart, but I, I really don't know what that is. You know, he's asking me. He wants me to eat. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is because I'm I'm not sure what it is, and just in case it's not something that uh, I should be saying. Uh, <laughs> No, no, I've, I've made that mistake before. I have to tell me what it is. Well, what do I, I, you have to tell me what that is. So, um, the, the chicken, actually, I, I, I'm going to have to try that again because uh, it actually was okay, but I missed, I was reading the chat. See, I got distracted with the chat. Forgot to taste the, the pairing. Thank you, Battle Daddy 19. Appreciate that. You're good. You're good. Okay. Give it a try. Okay, I like that. I like that. Battle Daddy 19 says it's a hot dog. Have a good one, Ricky. Um, well, I um, I don't have any hot dogs with me, but. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it might actually go good with a hot dog. It's possible it might go good with a hot dog. Um, you know, we have to try that sometime. I don't think I've ever tried a pairing with any particular um, uh, wine with, with a hot dog, per se. And uh, you know what? I like hot dogs. I really do. I do. And, um, and I like them loaded, too, you know, with the chili and the cheese and... The onions and the, uh, yeah, in the last few times I did that, it, it, I felt it the next day, but I tell you what, it was, it was great while <laughs> it lasted. <laughs> I'll say that. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll have to, i have to try that. Try it with a hot dog. I've, I've, we've done it with sausages. We've done it with beef sausages and, and summer sausages and things like that in the past. And some of the wines paired very well with them. The ones that really do tend to be wines that have a lot more tannins in them. And uh, to be a lot more full-bodied wines, and uh, th those are good pairings. Uh, a wine like this, I'm not sure that this is a good. So this is not a good sausage wine, um, so I don't know if it would really go well with a hot dog or not. But we're going to try it with smoked turkey. It was okay with the chicken, by the way. It, it was okay with the chicken. It, it wasn't bad. It's actually a, a pretty decent pairing with the chicken, um, with the uh, with this grilled chicken or the chicken bocce. So. Um, yeah, I thought it was all right. This will work with the chicken. Let's try it with the turkey. We'll try it with a little turkey and see see how mm, turkey's pretty good. Mm. We're gonna try. Okay, with the turkey works pretty good with the turkey. I like that. Not bad with the turkey at all. Not really. Not 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 bad at all. I bet this would go good with a, maybe a, a turkey sub. This would probably be fine with a turkey sub, especially if with a lot of veggies, because a rosé wine like this is, is great with salads, um, some veggies, things like that. Fre usually things like fresh um, salads and fresh vegetables like that. that that's why it, it probably works well for a, um, like for hors d'oeuvres and, and appetizers. I think that's probably a good fit with these, with this rosé, actually. Let me clear the palette one more time. Let's try it with the cheese. That's that's a, another test. Let's try it with cheese. We'll try it with the mozzarella first. White wines uh, tend to go pretty well with some white cheeses. Uh, that's often the case. This is a rosé. It does have some Merlot in it. So well, let's see if this works with the mozzarella. And this is a very soft mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a try. Um, 
I'd say um, um, this particular mozzarella, I, I don't know that I would do that. But let's try it with cheddar. Clear the palate one more time, try it with cheddar. And let's see how this goes. Cheddar. And this is kind of a medium cheddar. And um, this is a good cheddar, by the way. And yes, if you're if you're wondering about the gouda, I have something to say about that. Mm. It's okay with cheddar. And it's not my favorite. It's not not my first. It's okay. It's not bad with the cheddar. It really isn't. I think this is better with fresh uh, fruits and some veggies, like say maybe uh, if you've got like a celery, celery and carrots and things like that, you know, the finger foods and then maybe the celery with the pimento cheese. You know, if you get the celery with the pimento cheese and stuff in it, this actually might go okay with something like that. It might. And I don't have any of that, of either one to try it out, but it actually might be all right. But it's not bad with the cheddar. It's not, I liked it better with the cheddar than with the mozzarella. I will say that I wish I had the Gouda with me. And there's a reason why I don't have the Gouda with me, because traditionally we have the Trader Joe's creamy, double cream Gouda that we try with all the wines, and we paired it with uh, well over almost two dozen wines here, and we never had a miss. I can't do it tonight because we're out of Gouda. As a matter of fact, um, my lovely wife, Chi, said looked in the fridge and said, uh, said to me, excuse me, we're out of Gouda, completely out. And I'm thinking, oh, no, dun, 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 you know, <laughs> we're out of Gouda. So we didn't have any Gouda to pair it with tonight. I, I don't know that it really would have gone that well with the Gouda. So maybe it was best that we didn't have it with the Gouda tonight. I don't know. I suppose we'll never know. Um, so, you know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, I, well, I'll give you a final review on this at the end of the show. Uh, cause I, I still, as I said before, as I said so many times, you really, to really taste the wine, you really have to get down into the bottle, right? That's right. And, um, I have a couple of desserts to pair it with too. So we're going to try that towards the end as well. Anyway, uh, Battle Daddy 19, thanks for clarifying that for me. Appreciate it. And uh, let's go back to uh, Facebook for a minute. It's quiet in the chat on Facebook. And uh, it's usually, like I says, the 40-minute mark when people start wandering in there. <laughs> kind of quiet on YouTube. But um, let's see what we've got. Oh, you know what? I've got to cut this. There we go. I've got so many windows open. And uh, in order to get to some of the other things we want to talk about, I have to close some of those. I will say that uh, I picked this up, once again, I picked this up at a wine store in Blakeney, North Carolina. This is the local wine store near, near where we live uh, in Charlotte. And uh, I forgot to tell you what I paid for this bottle of wine. I was going to do that. Now, I'll tell you that this, uh, this rosé, once again, it's 50% uh, uh, Sasson and 50% Merlot. Very interesting mix, 50-50, which gives it that rose, uh, that rose color, the kind of pinkish color. Um, and according to Wine Store, in fact, I, let me check a look and see what they say it pairs with. Uh, they say there's apricot in it. I didn't taste any apricot. Uh, it has floral notes. Yeah, I tasted that. Uh, and it says it's, it pairs with snacks and appetizers, which uh, I, I was saying myself it does. But uh, so it's it's good for it's probably good for parties, but uh, the price that I paid for it there, and in fact I looked around on the internet and there was only one other place that I saw it for sale, and that was in um, that was in the UK, and they had it going. For, I think it was UK. Was it UK? I think so, and they had it going for eight point uh, twenty euros. Eight point twenty euros is that, uh, that that's what I that they had it for. I don't know what that converts to in American dollars right now. I know that changes on a daily basis, uh, especially these days, but um, I paid, I'll tell you what I paid for it, and I paid what Wine Store has on their wine, uh, their website at winestore-online.com. That's $5.99 for this bottle, $5.99. This is what attracted me to this in the, in, in the first place, because as I said, throughout this pandemic, 
uh, I was looking for more budget-friendly wines for all of us who are on a budget. You know, we've been, well, we've been shut in here for now for, what, five months? Is it, can you believe that? Since, uh, at least for us, since uh, March, since we got right back from Podfest uh, 2020 in Orlando. Uh, in fact, the, the, the day we got back from Podfest, uh, they, they kind of put everybody on a, you know, stay-at-home uh, recommendation. And, um, well, we've been staying at home for, what, since March? April, May, June, July, August. That's five months. So going, probably going on towards six months now, and uh, that's a long time. And, of course, a lot of folks have lost their jobs. Uh, my wife and I have been fortunate so far, knock on wood, that we, that we both still have our jobs, but we, we've all had to tighten our belts. We've all had to tighten our belts, and, um, and a lot of folks are, are really, uh, really in dire straits right now, so, so uh, I can appreciate that. So for that reason, I don't want to sit here and flaunt a $40. I can't afford a $40 bottle of wine anyway, even on a good day, okay? So we're not, doing, we're not opening $40 bottles of wine right now uh, on, this, on this show. Okay, not unless some a winery sends me one. Now, if you send me a forty dollar bottle of wine to review, I'll I'll be happy to do that to, to review it. Um, but I'm not going out to buy a forty dollar bottle of wine and opening it up and on the show. There's no, there's no way I'm doing that on a good day, uh, especially right now. Uh, look, folks, it's not two buck chuck time yet for me, but uh, I'd say five ninety nine. Uh, that just looks so attractive to me when they said, "Hey, try this. This is new. We'll try it out." What is it? It's a rosé. Oh, rosé. I don't know. It's five ninety nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's kind of how I did it. So uh, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, bring, yeah, bring one over. <laughs> um, five ninety nine. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. And and for the price, look, if I didn't like it, five ninety nine is still a lot of money. Uh, these days, but uh, you know, if I didn't like it, it's not like I was throwing, uh, you know, chucking a thirty-dollar, forty-dollar bottle of wine down down the uh, drain. But uh, this actually, if it turns out good, which so far I, I, I seem to like it, okay. It's I wouldn't buy a case of this because I'm not a rosé person. But you know what? I'll drink it if it's just if there's a bottle sitting there. I'm, and they're, they're appetizers and they're friends around to help me drink it, a family, whatever, and uh, we're just having a good time. I'm sure I'll drink it. I'll drink it. It's not, not bad. It's not bad wine. It really isn't. And I kind of like the, uh, the pear. I like pear anyway, and I like, um, I like peaches and strawberries. And it, I taste all three in these. So not bad. Not, not, not a bad wine at all. It really isn't. So, um, here we are uh, on Twitch. Let's see what's going on Twitch. Nothing much uh, else happening on Twitch tonight. Kind of quiet everywhere. And uh, well, let me check Facebook one more time. Okay. I don't know if I can see any anyone uh, has comments going on there. I can't see. If you do have comments coming up, I can't see your comments because I did refresh the page. So uh, let me know. Let me know. And I'll, I'll say... Uh, let me... Put something out there. Now let's see if you you can see my comment. If you are commenting in there, I can't see. This has happened before. This has actually happened. This is not, which is why I have a, uh, I have a tenuous relationship with with uh, Facebook. Even though this is where the stream started, uh, Facebook has not always been kind to me in terms of of uh, consistency with the uh, the. Uh, the quality of the the streams and whether or not they stop. It actually stopped on me a little bit earlier, and I had to refresh the, this page here that I'm re, that I'm uh, monitoring this on. And uh, it, last time I did that, I think I lost all the comments and I couldn't see anyone's comments on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and I'm not reading your comments, I apologize. I can't see them. Okay, and this has happened on a couple of occasions. So. Um, it's, it's just something. Also, uh, it looks like it's glitching a little bit on Facebook. And uh, I experienced this earlier today on Facebook. I was on, uh, I, I listened to the new, or I watched the new media show um, on a regular basis, being a podcaster and being in the podcast space. And, and Todd Cochran and, and um, Rob Greenlee, who do a fabulous job on the new media show, keeping everybody up to date, all the podcasters up to date, what's going on in the space. 
um, th their show kept glitching up a lot on Facebook. It looked great on YouTube and everywhere else, but it was just Facebook that it was just glitching and, and hanging up and, and, and stopping down, getting interrupted. Looks like it's happened a couple of times on my show too, so I think this is, this is a Facebook thing. Because I'll tell you what, I'm streaming on, I'm multi-streaming this right now, and I'm streaming on four different platforms simultaneously. I'm not having that issue on, uh, I'm not having that issue on Twitter. It doesn't look like it. I'm not having this issue on Twitch. It looks nice and, and nice and clean on Twitch. I'm not having this issue on um, YouTube either. It's just Facebook. And um, that's, and my wife, she's in the chat. Hello. Okay. Uh, she, you can see me, right? That's good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Actually, I'll give you a love because I love you, Chi. She, she brought me this platter. She made this platter for me, and she was so sweet about it. Anyway, so we have some birthdays to toast tonight. A couple of them. Not, not, not a lot, but a couple. And I thought we had a couple of other events to toast, but uh, I'm going to come up with some. <laughs> Um, I want to give out a shout out to one of my friends anyway, uh, and so I'll give him a toast too. But let's see, looking at my notes, with yeah, it's time to toast the birthdays. So let's toast some birthdays. So let me fill the glass up. <clears throat> fill it up. Fill her up. There we go. And so we're going to do some toasting. The first toast I would like, the first person I like to toast is to my good friend Junie. Junie. Junie Wright. Um, she is the wife of my friend uh, Mark. Uh, Mark Wright, and uh, her birthday is coming up on Monday. Let me get my notes on here. Yeah, we go, just to make sure. Monday, the 24th of August, her birthday is going to be Monday. And uh, I don't give out ages. Don't ask, uh, especially for the ladies. Uh, unless you really want me to give you out your age, it's fine. Uh, Molly says, oh, Molly's in the chat. Molly, it's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. It's been a while. And... Uh, uh, boy, I hope, I hope you're doing well. I really hope you're doing well, and and um, everything's going fine. Molly works at the wine store, the local Blakeney wine store, where I get a lot of my wine from. That's where I, I first uh, met her. Uh, she re she's really sweet. She's really nice, and she's very knowledgeable about her wines, and she's given me a number of recommendations for some of the fine wines that I've, I've uh, tested, uh, tasted in the past. And Molly, uh, also Trish, Trish knows her stuff too. Uh, the two of them there... They uh, they do a fine job. It, it uh, actually they educated me a little bit on on some of the finer points in, in some of these wines, and um, I, I kind of miss them both because I can't go into the store. Well, I guess I could, but it's really curbside service that I've been picking. I picked these up curbside service yesterday, and um, unfortunately because of that, I can't actually go in the store to to talk to anybody. But uh, maybe one of these days we can get back to that, Molly. But I hope you're doing well. Hope your family's doing well. And also uh, give a shout out to Trish, Trish and everyone else. It hasn't kicked in yet. Really, it hasn't, honestly. Sometimes it just wicks my merds up. Uh, but, uh, and, and also Matt, I did see, uh, Matt's the uh, person who loaded my car, uh, I think the time before I went in there last. And uh, so I got to talk to him just briefly. But it was, you know, through the car and outside. But uh, I kind of, kind of miss you guys. I miss you guys, you know, going in there and, and uh, chatting and doing the Thursday night wine tastings and just kind of, kind of hanging out and talking about stuff. But anyway, thanks for, for, for that, uh, Molly. I uh, appreciate you being here tonight. And uh, Stephanie's in the chat. She says, hi, Rick. Right back at you, Stephanie. It's great to see you, too. Uh, always great to see my friend Ch uh, Stephanie in the chat. And um, Stephanie does a couple of, of fine podcasts herself. And uh, Stephanie, you got to send me a promo from your last episode. I want to play it. I want to play it here live for everyone. Um, you know, one, one of the, uh, she does a couple podcasts, but one of the ones uh, that I've uh, really kind of, uh, uh, really kind of uh, attached myself to in, in a ways I listen to it pretty regularly is, is her Growing Uncomfortable, which she, uh, um, I, I think it's, it's a really nice, really nice little podcast, and I listen to it. Usually listen to it on Saturdays. I'm just sitting back and relaxing, and it's just something nice to listen to. So uh, it's good to see you here in, in the chat, Stephanie. And uh, anyway, I was just about to give birthday greetings to my friend Junie. Uh, so I, let me tell you about Junie a little bit. Um, Junie is uh, one of Chi's best friends. Uh, they're very, very close friends, my wife, Chi. 
and um, they uh, they've known each other for many many years, and they went to uh, they actually uh, did uh, a stint together uh, pretty much as nurses. They're, they're both nurses in in uh, in Georgia for a while, and um, I first met Junie when they were when they were uh, working there, I believe, uh, or just after, I, yeah, just before they they left uh, uh, Georgia. But um, I met Junie through um, Chi and uh, Mark, Mark who was uh, dating Junie at the time, and the four of us would, uh, on on occasion, we 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 double dated, <laughs> we double dated when I when I was dating uh, Chi, and we would uh, go around different places, uh, d- uh, Mercado in on International Drive in Orlando, we'd hang around there, and and we'd go to other places, uh, outlet malls and things like that. We just just hang out, have dinner together, and stuff like that. Got to know Mark and Junie. Um, really well, and uh, really fine people, really fine, upstanding people. And we, when we go up to visit them up in Maryland, we, we make a point to go by and see them. We've stayed with them a few times, and, and um, just really nice people. And um, Junie is just, she's just so sweet. She really is. And um, I wanted to give a birthday shout out to her. Her birthday, once again, is on the 24th. That's August 24th, that's Monday. So happy birthday to you, Junie. Happy, happy birthday. And you know, I'm going to toast you again because it's my show and I can. It's our show, actually. It's all our shows. And and uh, I want to say happy birthday to you. We have many, many more. I hope you're doing well. I hope Mark's doing fine and the boys as well. Hope they're uh, they're young men now. <laughs> Hope they're doing very very well. Here's to you, happy happy birthday. And my friend Junie, Junie Wright. Okay, there's an, another birthday I want to give to another special friend of mine. And this is for let me check the chat here real quick. I don't want to forget anyone in the chat. Okay, we're we're good there so far. Anything going on here? Good. Or fine. Okay, I want to uh, apologize for the interruption, uh, uh, Judy. <laughs> uh, people were coming in the chat there. I want to make sure everybody, nobody was missed. No one was missed. And um, anyway, to uh, another good friend of mine whose birthday is also this coming Monday, Monday the 24th. And this is for my good friend Jeff. Um, Jeff and I worked together for many years. For over 11, uh, well, it was all well, yeah, 11, 12 years, 12 years. We worked together for 12 years at WFL, Fox 35. We, well, it became Fox 35. And when originally when we started working there, it was, uh, it was just uh, uh, TV 35, uh, an independent station in Orlando, which later on when, when it was purchased by Meredith Corporation and became a Fox affiliate, uh, it became one of the top Fox affiliates in the country. And um, they're kind of, they were kind of like my second family. They're still my second family. A lot of people there that I miss, people that I worked with, some folks there that are no longer with us that I, I really, really miss. And uh, so, so uh, I met Jeff when I uh, first day I started working there. And uh, Jeff and um, my, my other good friend, Pete Moltak, three of us were in the film department. And uh, worked together in the film department. We had some great time. Oh, I can tell you some stories. I can tell you lots of stories. Now, we were we were kind of the renegades of the TV station back then in the day. When it was uh, uh, especially on Fridays, we were known for doing our our Friday um, lunches, extended lunches, and and uh, margarita Fridays and things like that. And um, yeah, uh, <laughs> those are some good times. And uh, Jeff and and Pete and I, Jeff, I, I mean, we we you know we poked fun at each other from time to time and and, and things like that. But it, Jeff was a really really cool guy, and uh, he he and Pete and I went into business together at one point, doing a um, selling computer software. We all got Commodore sixty four, Vic twenties, and then Commodore sixty fours. I think Jeff got an Atari too. And we used to go over to his house. Um, uh, when uh, when he got married and uh, it, we we went we'd go over to his house uh, on the weekends and and play games play video games I'm telling you talk about nerds maybe we'd sit there and play all kinds of video games 
And we started a business selling computer software for a while. And we did a lot of stuff together. We, 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 you know, we went to concerts. We went to concerts together. I mean, we did a lot of after work stuff together like that. We went to, went to concerts. I remember going uh, particularly to, uh, in particular, one in particular that was very memorable for me. Been, <laughs> been to a couple of them. Uh, was the Jethro Tull concert that we went to together, the three of us. And we had a, we just had a great time. It was just, a, it was just a fabulous time. That I think that was at the um, Tupperware. What well, the time was the Tupperware Center in Kissimmee. The Tupperware Auditorium, and um, just just uh, we just had a great time uh, together. And um, uh, Pete uh, was uh, it, Pete was a really cool guy, and he had a band going, uh, the, his band, the Generators, that uh, we used to go and, and watch. And um, we lost we lost our friend Pete um, not too long after I left WFL. Uh, but uh, but Jeff stayed on for longer and and uh, hey I remember his wedding <laughs> I went to his oh yeah <laughs> I don't want him to get mad at me <laughs> about this but <laughs> I wore and he can tell you this story uh, we went to we went when when Jeff and Zeta first got married and we went to their wedding <laughs> um, I wore I wore a white suit you know I mean, we're talking about the kind of white suit John Travolta wore in Saturday Night Fever. Um, I wore I wore this white suit to his uh, to his, to their wedding, and um, okay, I, I'm not going to go any farther with that right now. It was a memorable. It was it was memorable. I'll just say that. Anyway, uh, so Jeff. Anyway, here's to you. I miss you, my friend. I really do. Oh, Jeff is a magician too in his own right. He's he. Um, He's uh, many many years for many many years. He's been studying magic and he's been doing. Uh, he's very good at it too, by the way. Uh, but he uh, he's a magician, and he's written a couple of books. He's written a couple of books on on magic, card tricks, and things like that. Um, and uh, Jeff Pierce Magic, check it out. Jeff Pierce Magic. I want to give you a shout out there, Jeff. I, I believe that's that's a website, right? Jeff Pierce Magic. Anyway, uh, check it out. He's uh, very knowledgeable in that as well. Uh, just a just great all-around guy, and uh, he, he's also aged gracefully, too. I tell you what, I balled it out and everything like that, but Jeff, I mean, at his age, he still looks great. He, Jeff looks great. A little envious there on that, Jeff, buddy, but I'll tell you, here I am old and balding and everything like that, and he still looks great. Anyway, Jeff, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. I miss you, my friend. I'm going to toast you again, too, just because I can Jeff, here's to you. Once again, happy birthday. May you have many, many, many more. I hope uh, your whole family's doing well and you're staying safe. And uh, one of these days, we got to get together again. we got to catch up again. Here's to you, Jeff. Happy birthday. My good friend Jeff, Jeff Pierce. So, um, and just in case you're just joining us, this is the wine that we're drinking. This is... Um, a La Sense de Vente. This is 50% uh, uh, Sasson and 50% Merlot. This is a rosé. It's a rosé, and uh, good luck finding it on the internet because it's not easy to find on the internet. But you can get it at winestore-online.com, and I'm that's not I'm not pitching them per se. Although, like I said, they're great people, and uh, if you go if you're in the Charlotte area, they they'll ship. They'll ship to not every state, but the, but you can go online, order online, and they'll they'll ship. They'll ship to you. So uh, ch check it out. It's actually not a bad wine. It's actually not a bad wine. Anyway, so we have some... Uh, let me check the chat again before we get into the national days. We have a few national days to uh, to celebrate. And uh, I'm getting I'm getting text messages on my phone here. What's going on here? Oh, <laughs> nothing important. Okay. So, and even so, I'm not going to sit here and look at my phone while... I'm, talking to you because that's just rude and uh and it's happening again that that'll wait anyway um you know i've got a little rant about that but we'll we'll save that for later if if we have time to save for uh to later oh <laughs> uh, let's see where was i lost my train of thought left the station without me here we go all right we're back National days. Let's look at the national days. Let's toast some national days because we have a bottle that's two-thirds full and we've got to deal with that, don't we? Yes, we do. 
So let's take a look at some national days. This is courtesy of nationaldaycalendar.com, nationaldaycalendar.com, with a lot of uh, radio stations, TV stations, and, and media outlets use as a source for national days. And a lot of individuals as well. And uh, this is um, the CEO of NationalDayCalendar.com. This is my good friend. Um, well, that's it. That's kicking in a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I? I uh, lost my train of thought again. Okay. Um, let's look at the National Days here. Okay, Nat, first up, August 22nd, 2020. Or is it 2020? doesn't matter. It is what it is, and uh, what a year it is so far, right, folks? Uh, August 22nd is National Surgical Oncologist Day. Um, I'll drink to that because, uh, you know, an oncologist, they deal with cancer issues, and um, this is a surgeon for, for, for cancer-related issues, and uh, we need those people. We really, we, we really, really need those people. I'm going to read a little bit... Uh, from this, this I'm just reading a little bit of this from nationaldaycalendar.com. Fair use, by the way. Uh, National Surgical Oncologist Day recognizes the accomplishments of every life-saving surgeon who specializes in abolishing cancer. Um, I think uh, these people are are vital right now, very vital. And uh, I've, I've lost three family members to cancer. Uh, we've lost uh, friends to cancer. And acquaintances over the years, and um, it's just it's just a horrible, horrible disease, and, and oh, it just don't. Yeah. I, it, it's a scary disease. It really is, and and it, it's terrible. And I have a friend of mine now who's who, uh, a fellow podcaster who's battling this, has been battling this for a little while, and does a podcast on this on the topic. And um, it's just it's it's a really it, it, this is just a. a it's it's a horrible, horrible thing. All forms of cancer. It's just horrible. But uh, anyone who is there that can that can help to to uh, alleviate this a cure for cancer. I don't know if we'll ever see a cure for cancer in our lifetime. I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever see a cure for cancer. Period. I have no idea. All I can say is that we need people like this. These uh, these oncologists. We need all these cancer experts there to help to help um, uh, sort of fend, uh, fight this. We need uh, everyone, we, we actually need everyone on board to help fight this all over the place. There are organizations, really fine organizations, that, uh, you know, that are uh, fighting this. And, and also for children, cancer in children. That, 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 that is just really a heartbreaking thing all the way around. And if you can give even just a little bit just a little bit to, to give a little bit to uh, some of these these fine uh, organizations that are helping kids through cancer, dealing with it, uh, trying to fight it. Uh, there, there, there are several of them out there, and, and you know, uh, American Cancer Society and, and uh, all of those are they're they're fine, but uh, you know, some of the the children's hospitals that are are dealing with this and having to battle this and uh, with with our kids it's just uh, it's heartbreaking to watch this and um, I just I don't want to see any more kids die of cancer I don't any little bit that you can give to help to uh, your favorite and there are a number of them out there uh, but ones that are reputable that you can that you can give to please 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 do that um, Anyway, here's to National Surgical Oncologist Day. I will drink to that. National Be an Angel Day. National Be an Angel Day. Look, everyone should just be nicer to each other all the way around, and I'm going to drink to that wholeheartedly because we should all be nicer to each other. We should all be angels to each other, right, to help each other. I'll drink to that. National Bow Day. Okay, what is Bao? I had to look this up a little bit. Uh, Bao is a Chinese, kind of a Chinese pastry. And from what I've seen of Bao is, uh, is that, is it Bao, Bao, Bao? I, I don't know. Um, uh, but um, it's B-A-O. 
National BAO Bao Day. And uh, it's a Chinese kind of uh, pastry thing. But it looks, I saw a picture of it, and it looks like, uh, kind of like puto, uh, a little bit. A little bit like puto, which is a, a rice cake. And my wife makes it sometimes. And it's great. It's great with butter, with cheese, or, you know, you put all kinds of stuff on it. You can put icing on it if you want. And my wife my wife gives me the evil eye when I, I mention that. But, uh, you know, you can put anything on it. It's, 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 it's really great. And, and they're easy to eat because you can sit there. They're little, little rice cakes, and you can sit there and eat. You can easily eat a half a dozen of these in a sitting. I don't recommend it, but you could do that easily. Really good. And uh, National Bow Day. Okay. Never Been Better Day. That's B-E-A-N. Never Been Better Day. I like beans. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not clicking on it right now. But uh, <clears throat> Okay. National Tooth Fairy Day. Today is National Tooth Fairy Day for another, another hour and about, about another hour. National Tooth Fairy Day. I've got a story about that. I could talk about that all night. Tooth Fairy. Okay. Who, were you the tooth fairy at your house? I mean, if you have kids, I mean, I mean we're talking, I'm talking to parents now with kids. I know a lot of single folks that, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't imagine. But if you're a parent with kids, were you the, the fair, tooth fairy at your house? Which, which parent was the tooth fairy in their house? See, in our house, I was the tooth fairy. And uh, it took my kids a little while to, to catch on to this when they were younger. Eventually they did. Eventually they kind of uh, figured it out. But uh, it took them a little while. And um, I, it's funny because, and I don't have any of them with me right now, but I saved, I saved every tooth that I pulled from my kids, I mean, from, that I was able to, to confiscate from my kids under their pillows at night. You know, they'd leave the tooth on their pillow and then go in and leave. Now, I, I had a couple of near misses where, and actually I had one that was a, a real miss where I I forgot. I fell asleep. I meant I was trying to wait for, uh, I think it was my daughter, Tia. I was trying to wait for her to fall asleep so I could sneak into her room to her room and make the switch, you know, between the, the tooth and, and, and the quarter. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, she didn't go to sleep <laughs> until real, real early in the morning, and uh, I beat her to it. I mean, I, I fell asleep first, and so when I got up the next morning, it was it was it was late morning, and so she was. I I, I think she was uh, complaining to to or telling uh, my wife that uh, that the tooth fairy didn't come. So I had to kind of, I, I kind of got wind of that real quick. So I snuck in her room while she was not in there, made the switch then, and then uh, uh, <laughs> had to make it real quick. And then she came back later and I said, well, why don't you check again? Why don't you check again? And so she checked again and, and oh, wait, the money is here. Couldn't figure that one out right away. I had a couple of near misses. One night, though, the, one of my most famous ones was, uh, yeah, I was the Tooth Fairy. Did not wear the tutu or the winks, okay? Not doing that. Um, <clears throat> I drew the line there. But uh, the tooth... <laughs> uh, that's why it's starting to kick in, isn't it? Let's have some more. Okay, so um, I... One night... This was... this. Was, yeah. Uh, so one night, uh, I, I don't remember if it was Tia or Tommy that lost the tooth, but they were asleep, and I snuck in there to make the switch. And uh, I, I, I had to hunt around for the tooth under the pillow, found the tooth. And then uh, the thing is, though, that I had, uh, I think I had my wallet with me, but I I couldn't find a change. So I said, well, you know, I'll leave a buck. I'll leave a dollar. And that'll freak them out. So I'm, and I'm in the dark. This is in the dark. And I can't, there's no light in there uh, to speak of. And, and I, so I'm hunting around with my wallet and I pulled out, quick pulled out a bill and, and st- stuck it under the pillow and then uh went off took my took my little tooth there and, and went off to to bed you know where this okay don't 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 get ahead of me now don't get ahead of me <laughs> the next morning um uh, i wake up and and the kids ecstatic i don't remember if it was to your time to be honest one of the kids they, they were just ecstatic and i'm like what is it what is it and and they say well, the tooth fairy they left me five dollars and like you know i'm like they did. They left you five dollars. 
I sure am glad I didn't have a fifty dollar bill in, that, in, in my wallet. I tell you that that would have been uh, <laughs> that's fifty dollars to never see again. But I uh, left the five dollar bill in there, and I'm thinking of it. <laughs> and my wife looked at me. So that was generous. I'm like, that was an accident. <laughs> but uh, they had the, they got the five dollars <clears throat> anyway. So um, they used to leave me messages. They would they would um, they would leave notes um, in, in, for the tooth fairy, and I kept all those too. I, I had a drawer where I kept all of their teeth in a drawer under my sock drawer, and then the bottom where they couldn't find them easily. And I have, I've got all their teeth, their baby teeth, I mean. I've got all their baby teeth down there, still to this day. And some notes along with it. Some really cool, very, very clever little notes that they, they, uh, that they wrote to the Tooth Fairy. And uh, Chi and I will actually, every once in a while, we'll get out and pull them out and read them just for, for laughs. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, Tooth Fairy. Here's to... Uh, I'll tell you what, we had a lot of fun with that. We had a lot of fun with that. So I'm going to drink to, uh, what was it, National Tooth Fairy Day? I lost my place here. National Tooth Fairy Day, I'll drink to that. Because that was just a, that was just fun most of the time. National Pecan Tort Day. Is it tort or torte? I don't know. It's tort. I don't eat them, so I don't know, and I don't care. I'm not a big pecan person. Uh, so if you like it, toast it. August 23rd, which is tomorrow. Well, it's going to be tomorrow in about 55 minutes. Is National Ride the Wind Day? National Sponge Cake Day? Sponge Cake Day. You like sponge cakes? I can take them or leave them. Uh, you know, sponge cake, okay. I, I can take a little piece of a sponge cake and then I'm done. Like eating a sponge, I, 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 they have to have icing. I cannot eat a sponge cake without icing. It's got to have some icing on it, you know. And, and none of this whipped cream stuff. And it's got to have some ice cream, uh, icing on it. Um, yeah, ice cream too. But uh, National Sponge Cake, not uh, sponge cake's not my favorite. I think part of it's the consistency, and part of it's because sponge cake. Uh, to me, there's not a whole lot of taste in in in, in sponge cake. So it has to have the icing on it. Uh, nah, you can you can toast that if you want. National Sponge Cake Day, National Cuban Sandwich Day. Who doesn't like a Cuban sandwich, right? National Cuban Sandwich Day. Which, by the way, now I I can't eat a lot of the pork meats in there and stuff like that, but I do like I do like sub sandwiches similar to that. But they do go well with wine. Some wines, there are some wines that make a really good pairing with a Cuban sandwich. Give that a try. Give that a try. Anyway, I think that does it for the national days. I, that does it for the national days this week. Uh, there, there are more. There are more, but we can spend all night, and, and I only have half a bottle of wine left. Let's go back to the chat for just a minute. Battle, uh, Battle Daddy 19 still in the chat. Uh, Captain Swiss 1. Uh, anyone else going on? Let's see, anything else going on YouTube? Not really. And on the, uh, oh, let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, on Facebook. Facebook's been just really touchy tonight. I don't know what's going on with Facebook. They've been really touchy all day. Uh, Ian Coyne, uh, good to see you, Ian. And, uh, and Pete. It looks like Pete's uh, there somewhere. Pete Wiremuller, good to see you in the chat. And tell me what you're drinking, by the way. So, um, what do we have here? Oh, uh, well, not a whole lot. This is going to be a short show tonight, folks. Like I said, it's a rosé. It's not a red wine, so this could be a shorter show. Um we did the birthdays, national days. Oh, let's talk about weather radius for just a minute. I want to talk about the weather. We got nothing else to talk about. Let's talk about the weather. That's a safe thing to talk about, right? We don't do politics. We don't do religion on this show. This is a show about bringing people together. And what brings people together more than wine, right? Right. So uh, it's this is a show about bringing people together. So what else can we talk about? The weather. Who? I mean, how much discord can there be? Uh, between people when it comes to the weather. I mean, how much, uh, how much, argu how many arguments can we have about the weather? No, 
that's something else people can generally agree on. The weather's either good or it's bad uh, or whatever. The weather this coming weekend is uh, going to be pretty interesting. We have an historical event happening here weather-wise. Now, there are a couple of things. I was watching a YouTube video where they were talking about uh, the, the sun going into sort of a, a more dormant state for a while, and uh, that's not necessarily a good thing for the weather. Uh, but but uh, we do have something else that's actually more pressing, uh, more concerning, and that is uh, we have a couple of uh, tropical storms or hurricanes approaching, and I'm and we have not one. They're both going heading towards the Gulf. We have not one, but two hurricanes heading towards the Gulf of Mexico. They're going to hit the Gulf of Mexico, and not only just two of them heading there, it's not boom, boom. It's not one after the other. They're going there at the same time, simultaneously. We have two hurricanes simultaneously about to enter the Gulf. They're saying that they're both going to hit uh, sometime, I think the last time I checked, sometime around Tuesday, I think, was if, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, I haven't checked the weather here lately, uh, the last few hours, but the last I checked, they were both going to hit somewhere, uh, sometime around Tuesday. Uh, one is heading north, northwest. The other one's uh, uh, heading nor uh, kind of a, there's taking more of a westerly northwest heading, and the other one's heading straight northwest. And uh, not straight, no, northwest, kind of like that. And it could turn north. It, it's possible it could turn north after that. So, uh, folks, on all along the and then these things are coming together. They're going to basically be coming together. <coughs> excuse me, coming together at once. And uh, that's very concerning because we're not talking about just Louisiana, or maybe just Texas, or maybe just Mississippi, or maybe just. Uh, the Gulf co uh, Coast of Florida or the Panhandle. We're talking about everybody on that end of of the, of the country. We're talking about everyone around, along the end of the Gulf Coast. That includes Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, um, Texas. Uh, you know, all all those areas there are going to get hit. They're going to get, uh, and we don't know how badly yet. We don't know how bad, and we don't know what's going to happen. When these two things look like they may even, you know, collide at some point, we don't know, because it's never happened before. This is the, at least not in in our own history since we've been recording hurricanes. This has never happened. This is an historic event for us, for for our history. Now, it's possible that they could have happened many, many times over, you know, centuries ago and millennia ago. But as long as we've been recording these weather events, uh, these hurricanes over the last, uh, what, 120, 150 years, whatever, how long we've been recording, this has never happened before. This is, this is a first. So we don't really know what to expect out of this. We don't know how bad it's going to be. You know, well, they, uh, and, and Tia was, uh, my daughter Tia was asking about that this morning, I think. She was saying, well, you know, they're going to cancel, could they cancel each other out? No, I don't think so. Well, they Combine together and make a bigger storm? I don't know. I just, I've never seen that happen before. In any case, it, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's, it's completely unpredictable. But in any case, no matter what happens, you really need to be prepared. Now, if you haven't done it yet, now's the time to do it. It's almost past time, but go, go to ready.gov. That's R E A D Y.gov. It's a government website. And get your list together. Look, look at the hurricane preparedness list. It's up there. And they have a list of everything that you need to be prepared for a hurricane. Okay? And all, all the emergency supplies that you need. Now, I'm, I'm saying this because um, it's not just the Gulf Coast, but, you know, these things are going to travel up. So you're going to be finding them going out west and up to the Midwest. You never know. One might take a turn and, and start going eastward. You just don't know. Um, hurricanes are not that predictable. I mean, they can they have different predictable tracks. They have different models that they can they can uh, use to to try to predict it. But in the very end, 
you never really know what's going to happen until this hurricane hits. You really never know. So it's great. It's it's really a great idea to be prepared. In fact, it's imperative that you be prepared. Okay, go to ready.gov, get your list. One of the things, uh, and I'm segueing into this. Okay, <laughs> one of the things you really need to be prepared with. Get the third item on the list, as a matter of fact, besides food and water, is a weather radio, an emergency radio, an emergency weather radio. Also, I think the fifth or sixth thing on the list is a two-way radio, so you can have a means of communication. Because what's going to happen is when the hurricanes hit, and you can ask anybody in Puerto Rico that got hit, or the Bahamas, or, uh, or, or anywhere else in Florida, um, when, when you get hit with a huge storm like that um communications cell phone communications go out all kinds of other communications go down and usually your last line of defense a last form of communication that's still available is a radio a two-way radio that's oftentimes that's all you got left a uh, battery powered preferably battery powered radio that uh, uh that is somewhat uh weather resistant or weatherproof and um, now, uh, buy two way radios has them. Buy two way radios has a whole bunch of radios. Oh, that's the wrong. Oh, well, let me check this out. There we go. I hit the wrong. Hit the wrong button there. <laughs> hit a couple of the wrong buttons. So, folks, you saw some. Yeah, that's a film. Let me try this again. Um, it's not on there. Okay. Buy two-way radios has uh, all kinds of uh, radios, weather radios. Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> I apologize for that, folks. That was <laughs> the wrong, the wrong thing popping up. Anyway, uh, buy two-way radios has them at buy two-way radios dot com. That's b u y t w o r a d i o s dot com. I don't have the, the thing up here at the moment uh, for some. Oh, yes, I do. Here we go. All right, let's let's try this instead. Buy2wayradios.com. They have all kinds of radios. You can get any kind of radio pretty much that you need. Marine radios, airband radios, weather radios, FRS and GMRS radios, business radios, all kinds of radios that that uh, that that uh, you need for any kind of situation pretty much. Ham radios. We have a lot of ham radios. If you're a ham, if you're an amateur radio, a uh, person we have all they have we have all those on the site as well. So um, buy two way radios has these radios and I am uh, I have an, a promo code if you need to get a radio right away no matter what kind of radio it is you can use the promo code wine show that's w i n e s h o w w i n e s h o w use the promo code wine show at checkout and you get 5% off your order and this does not apply to just weather radios but any kind of radio there or any kind of radio accessory one of the things here is that uh, one of the radio accessories i have here is a, a surveillance earpiece and for a lot of podcasters that are interested in this this is i use the surveillance earpiece and it's uh, this is actually an SE one ten L O dash L O. That means a listen only. It has a listen. It's a listen only earpiece that I have connected, so I can hear and monitor the show. And uh, of course, it's on a delay. It's on like a fifteen second delay right now on Facebook. So that's why sometimes I have delayed reactions to certain things. But uh, but but uh, that's what I use here. You can get. Discounts on all that stuff just with the promo code Wine Show W I N E S H O W W I N E S H O W get five percent off your order. Now for full disclosure, I work for Buy Two Way Radios. They're my employer. Uh, I've worked for them going on ten years. I'll be celebrating my ten year anniversary in October. Um, I don't make any extra. Just to be for full disclosure, I don't make anything off this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pitching the radios, but it's also but it's it's for a good cause because it's uh, I want you to be safe and the weather radios are important. I take a great stock in these radios. I have a couple sitting on my desk. I've got this one, ER three ten. We took this with us when we went up to uh, went up to Boone a couple uh, last week to take uh, my son Tommy up to to college. Uh, we've got this one here too, and this is a has a built-in GMRS two-way radio in it. 
Uh, I've got a, I've got a bunch of radios here. I've got several radios to keep with me, and this is what I do. This is my day job. Uh, I work with radios. I write about radios. I make videos about radios, podcasts. I do the two-way radio show podcast with my uh, uh, with my employers, and uh, I, I do a lot with radios. Okay, it's been uh, part of my life for for quite a while. Uh, I am a licensed ham radio operator. I'm also a uh, GMRS radio uh, operator. We, our, our family has a GMRS radio license. And I'm also a trained weather spotter. Um, what we do is I, I have a weather station downstairs and I will from time to time uh, you know, go onto the local nets and uh, make reports, weather reports for, for, uh, for the weather spotter network. And that is actually, that network, if, if you don't know, is what uh, a lot of the local weather stations use to get some of their weather reports, uh, to, you know, if somebody they're saying, "Oh yeah, they're reporting dime-sized hail down here," they're reporting golf-ball-sized hail over here, they're reporting a funnel cloud over this way. Um, that's where they're getting these reports from. They're getting these reports from weather spotters like myself and like my son Tommy, who's also a ham and a weather spotter, um, and uh, that's that's where they get these reports from. So. Um, for full disclosure, what's going to work for the company, but I am not making any extra money on this, okay? They're not, technically, they're not sponsoring my show. I don't have any sponsors. I'm just doing this because my boss said, yeah, you can." I asked him, I said, well, can I offer my, my viewers and my listeners 5%? He said, sure. Put together a, a, a promo code and, and give that out. So that's, that's what I'm doing here, folks. This is for you, okay? This is not for my benefit. Okay, I just get to keep my job and you know whatever. But that this is for your benefit. Okay, not mine. I'm not making any extra off of that. So just for just to let you know, please. I do deeply care. Please get a weather radio. Get some some kind of protection and go to ready.gov and um, and get that emergency kit uh, uh, ready. It doesn't matter if you don't live on the coast. We have plenty of other disasters that happen all over the place. Look, they've got wildfires in California. They've got fires all over California. There's a lot of stuff going on, folks. They had an earthquake. Uh, a friend of mine reported an earthquake in, uh, where was it? In Michigan, I think. 3.1, 3.2, something like that. We had a 5.1 uh, earthquake uh, a couple of weeks ago here in Charlotte. So, like I said, disasters happen everywhere. Just be prepared for them. Just be prepared. Don't be that person that goes to Sam's Club to buy 10 cases of water, uh, you know, the night before something's going to hit. Because two things are going to happen. One, everybody's going to be in there doing the same thing. And second, you're probably not going to find any water because it's all going to be already gone. So don't do that. Don't be that person who does that. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Enough proselytizing on on preparedness, weather preparedness. Anyway, so um, I wanted to tell you also about uh, something that we're we're going to be doing next week. This is going to be cool. I meant to, and I apologize if Ed's in the chat here. I don't know if Ed's in the Ed's in the chat. Just got here. <laughs> Ed, it's, it's great. It's fortuitous that you are here. It's great to see you, my good friend Ed Anthony. I'm going to toast you just because I can. Yeah, let me check the other chats real quick first. I was going to, uh, okay, we're good. Uh, I was going to uh, tell you about something last week, and I asked Ed last week to remind me, and he did. Ed, you did remind me, and I really appreciate that. Unfortunately, at the end of the show, I forgot again. And that's not your fault. That's mine. That's all on me. We had so much going on. So I'm not forgetting this week, and I'm going to talk about it right now. So uh, last uh, last week uh, I mentioned uh, I just briefly mentioned it something called the analyst and uh, when I was younger as you know as many of you know who who follow me and who watch the show uh, I was a filmmaker in in, in a past life okay and uh, I used to make small films. I grew up, I started making films when I was like 11 years old, 11 or 12 years old, maybe 10, might have been earlier than that, um, on standard 8 millimeter. That's what I had. That's what my dad had. Took his camera away and never gave it back to him, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, and uh, 
so uh, later on, I got a Sound Super 8 camera, and we were making films, and you know, made films throughout high school. And then after high school, I joined a club. Uh, we, we actually formed a club, uh, a cinematography club in, in high school, and made films there with a group of, of some of my closest friends. And then after high school, we joined a, uh, a local club in Orlando called the Cinematography Club of Orlando at the time, which later became the Association of Cinematic Arts, and then uh, later on when video was introduced, the Association of Cinematic and Video Arts. Anyway, so we, we um, it was a whole group of us that were making, making low-budget films, you know, short films, for fun, mostly, for fun. And... Um, you know, it was great. It was great. We we had, we made a lot of films. I have about roughly about ten thousand, twelve thousand feet of film in a bin over here that's waiting to be transferred. Some of it, a few of them, I have already transferred. This includes a couple of uh, the silent films, like the one that I accidentally showed you. Uh, I accidentally popped up a little bit while a little while ago. That was the start of a film I did called Attack of the Bubble Creatures. That was shot on standard eight millimeter and uh did did a bunch of films on, on standard eight then we did a lot of super eight films and uh we did um uh, some animation i even did some yes i did i dabbled in some not just animation but did some cell animated films we animate on cells the way disney used to animate them and the way they were animated the warner brothers shows and the cellulose acetate uh clear cellulose acetate over backgrounds and stuff and shooting them one frame at a time I did some of that. I dabbled in, in cell animated films. And I dabbled in a little bit of claymation and uh, stop motion and uh, cutout animation, you know, using cutouts and stuff. We did a lot of that kind of stuff. So we had a lot of fun with it. And uh, one of the films that we and we did a lot of live action stuff as well. Well, one of the films that we made, uh, this was one that just not, not too long after we got, uh, we got out of high school, it was a few years afterwards, and uh, after I met Ed, and we were working at Disney together, and uh, this was one called The Analyst. And it was a short film. I'm not going to go into a long thing about what the film's about because I want to surprise you with it. We're going to show it next week. Uh, that was the announcement I was going to make. Um, th we did this film called The Analyst, and um, I went searching around over the years. I've had this thing for 38, almost 30, 39 years and uh, sitting in the bin, and I, I was concerned about it uh, basically wasting away and disintegrating at some point because film doesn't last forever. And uh, so I searched long and hard to find someone to transfer, to do a, a decent, not just transfer the film, but actually do a, a good, restor a decent restoration of the film. And uh, I did find a guy, uh, his name's Nicholas Coyle, and I'm sending him some more films, by the way, uh, to, to do. But because uh, I, I was really pleased with his work, but he did a fine job on it. I still have a little work to do on the audio of it, which I'm going to do before we, we show it next week. But um, I was really impressed with the quality of the transfer uh, of the, the restoration. And uh, so, and, and, and it's held up pretty well. It's held up pretty well over the last 39 years as far as uh, the, the film itself is concerned and the story. It's about a, It's a six minute film. But I'm going to, I'm not just going to show it here next week on the wine stream. I'm actually going to premiere it. This is going to be the world premiere because this film has only been shown locally to our friends, family, film club members. And, and I think we, we actually, I think we did enter it in a film festival once. But um, we never really did the judge. We should have really taken it to more of the film festivals. I think it could have done better. But uh, it, it stayed away, shelled for, for 39 years, and uh, this is going to be the first time that it's ever been seen by the masses, and this is going to be the first time it's ever been shown on the Internet. Uh, not, not on YouTube. It's going to be exclusively, it's going to be premiered exclusively right here on the Saturday Night Wine Stream next week on Drink with Rick. And uh, I want to invite everyone to see this film. I think you'll like it. I think you'll get a kick out of it. My, my, kids, uh, my kids had heard about it, and they even heard the whole synopsis of the film. Years ago, I, used to, I told them about it. She's seen it before. But um, on film, as a matter of fact, not a projector, on a screen. <laughs> but uh, the kids had never seen it, and uh, as far as I can recall or that they can remember. And I told, I told them about the premise, but 
I showed it to them about a week, or just, just before Tommy left for Appalachian State, and uh, I showed it to them one night, and uh, they were both like, whoa. <laughs> they weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting it. So uh, uh, that, was the, that was the reaction we were going for. That was the whole reaction we were going for in the film to begin with. So, and, and everyone we've ever shown the film to has had that, whoa, reaction to it. So, uh, and I don't want to give it all away because talking, telling you about the premise is going to give it all, all away. But uh, I want I want you to be here next week to see this film. I decided to show it to you, and uh, there's going to be sound, so uh, I won't do any commentary like I did with Attack of the Bubble Creatures. I did all this this director's commentary. I'm not going to do that next week. It's going to be six minutes of just showing you a film. Please join me, and uh, I welcome the feedback too. Welcome to feedback. So, anyway, Ed, thanks for for uh, for reminding me, and uh, I apologize for not following up on it myself last week. But we're going to do this next week on the wine stream, and uh, just to let you know, the reason why the reason why uh, Ed is uh, uh, I'm really pointing this out to Ed is because uh, Ed was involved with the project, and uh, he did the music. He performed the music. The original motion picture soundtrack for attack uh, for uh, excuse me for uh, the analyst. He did the original motion picture soundtrack, and uh, uh, it, it's it's cool. It's held up. I think it's held up pretty well. I think it worked out perfect. I, I think it worked out perfect for this film. It was really we were really really happy with it, and he did a fine job with it. He did a fine job, and uh, Ed, thank you. And uh, we're going to get a chance to see it. Ed, Ed, you've seen the film. I know you've seen the film several times, but uh, I know you haven't seen it in what 37, 38 years. So we're going to we're going to show it. We're going to show it next week. Anyway, uh, that is that was my big announcement for that. There is one more thing I want to let you know about, and that is uh, that is this. Let's see if I have it up here. I've got to press the right button this time. We're doing another giveaway. We're gonna like we did with uh, uh, the uh, uh, Start Ugly book. We're gonna do another giveaway, another book giveaway. This is for my friend Sean, Sean Yesner, Sean M. Yesner, Esquire. He is an attorney. He is a uh, a debt cons uh, debt relief attorney. He's he, that's what he specializes in: foreclosures and debt relief, debt consolidation, things like that. He's very good at what he does. He's a really great guy. And he does a podcast called Crushing Debt. I highly recommend you listen to his podcast. I listen to it on a regular basis. And uh, I first met him at PodFest back in 2018. Tommy and I both did. And uh, he's, uh, he's a really cool guy. And um, he re he's very good at what he does. His podcast is great, so I, I highly recommend that. But he does this book called Crushing Debt. He he wrote this book called Crushing Debt. That is um, nine strategies to eliminate financial bull bullies. This uh, I wish I'd read this book years ago. I, I really wish I had, but uh, I did read it. I read the whole thing cover to cover, especially including the forwards and everything else. Uh, so I have read this book, and I can't highly recommend it. In fact, I'm not only highly recommending it, I'm giving away a copy. Now, not this copy that you see right here, because this is a copy is my own personal copy that, that's that been uh, uh, signed by, by uh, Sean. He signed it for me. But um, I'm going to send you a copy uh, of Crushing Debt, Nine Strategies to Eliminate Financial Bullies by Sean M. Yesner, Esquire. Uh, if you are the lucky winner of my next uh, contest here, and all you need to do, <clears throat> all you need to do is just send me an email. Send me an email at rick at savoyamedia.com. It's rick at S-A-V-O-I-A-M-E-D-A. Uh, okay, let me try that again. Rick at S A V O I A M E D I A dot com. Do I need to spell Rick? Okay. You can see it, right? On the screen. R I C K. Um, Rick at SavoyaMedia.com. Just send me an email. You don't need to give me a dissertation or anything about that. It, you send me comments or, or whatever if you want. That, that, that's great. I, I'll, I'll read your comments. Uh, and I may read them live here on the show as well. But um, no, just send me an email and say that, that, that you want to win this book. 
That's all you have to do. Just send me an email, say you want to win this crushing debt book. And um, next week, you can also t tell me in the chat too. If you're in the chat and you can't send me an email, tell me in the chat. And uh, let me know in the chat and I'll put your name in the pot. And next week on the 29th, that's August 29th, 2020, after we show the analyst, the world premiere of the analyst, we'll do a drawing for the book, Crushing Debt, and one lucky winner will win a copy of Crushing Debt by Sean, uh, by Sean Yesner. Okay, so um, that's all I have to do. It's not a lot of work. All you have to do is just send me an email and say, hey, I, I, I want to win this. Put me in, put my name in the, in the drawing. And then we'll we'll uh, next week we'll we'll draw for it. So you have a week. You have one week. Make it count. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have here. That's pretty much all I have tonight. Uh, I just want to say that. Uh, oh, Ed says and it had music. Yes, it did. It certainly did. I think I yeah I mentioned that. Okay, uh, and it did. And. Uh, Let's see. Let me check the chats one more time. Quiet, kind of quiet on on uh, Twitch tonight. A little surprised, but it's it's good. It's all good. So this may be a short show after all. Chi, if you're watching, that's what she was kind of hoping for. <laughs> she says, "Happy birthday, Junie!" And uh, yes, happy birthday, Junie. I'll toast her one more time. Happy birthday, Junie. So that's pretty much all I have. Oh yeah, there is one more thing, as Colombo would say. Just one more thing. We're going to uh, taste test a couple of desserts with this wine, right? I said I was going to do that, so we are. So first one we're going to taste. I have these things. These are, you know what these are, right? Let me get a closer shot of it. These are these little, those little vanilla wafer, uh, not wafers, but they kind of like these waffly wafer things. I think this one's actually kind of stale. It's been sitting here for long. We'll taste this because it's vanilla-y. Is that a word? Vanilla e, wafery. It's not a vanilla wafer, okay? It's not a Nabisco vanilla wafer or whatever. Whatever. It's uh, it's just a vanilla one of these. I don't know what they call these things. Anyway, so uh, I'm taking this one apart. So let me get one that's not. I'm going to take a taste of this, and we're going to try it with the wine. And yes, it is stale, but it's not bad. Hey, I like that. I'm going to try that again. Let me eat the other half. Don't worry it's my, about my... Gee, don't worry about my diet or lack of one. I'm doing this for science. Hey, that works pretty good. I could do that. Get a pack of these things. You know what I'm talking about, right? These these little wafery things, and you can, they're like little. I like to take them apart. Sometimes I like to take them apart and eat them, right? You got little layers in there. The I'm making a mess right here, all over the mic and everything. Um, yeah, I could. You know what? I could get a pack of these and a bottle of this, and uh, have a huge sugar rush. And uh, boy, I'll feel that in the morning. But it tastes it actually it tastes pretty good. I like that. I like that. All right, let me clear my palate one more time. This is the end of the show. Good thing, too, right? Okay. My wife made this tonight. This is a um, it's a brownie cookie. It's like a brownie chocolate chip cookie. We had a couple tonight where we were watching Farscape. We've been on a Farscape kick lately. I, I like sci-fi, and, and uh, she and I have been watching... Uh, Decided to watch the whole series uh, all again. I'd seen most of Farscape when I was, you know, back when it first came out. I didn't see every episode, but I saw a lot of them. And uh, so I was a big Farscape, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed Farscape. But uh hadn't seen it for a long time. And then most of it showed up on, uh, uh, not Netflix, but uh, the Amazon, Amazon Prime. So since we're paying for Prime and uh, uh, I need to watch something. To get my money's worth out of it, and I said, "Hey, let's watch Farscape." So we we're watching the whole series, and she had never seen it, so we're watching that. Anyway, uh, I digress because that's what we do on this stream of consciousness kind of show. So here tonight, 
she made um, these brownie chocolate chip cookies. I don't care much for brownies. I'm not really a brownie person. I don't like brownies much, but I did find these actually intriguing. And you know what? While watching Farscape, it was not a bad bad thing to eat. It was, it was okay to snack on. Let's try it with this rosé. Oh, boy. Mm, this cookie is, wow, that's rich. It's good. Uh, okay, I'm trying this. I'm trying that only once, okay? I tried that only once. I'm not doing any more of that right now. And I'll tell you why. Let me clear my palate first. Well, let me clear my palate again. It's still in there. Okay, the reason I reacted the way I did because it was good. It was too good. It was too good. That that is rich. That is extremely. First of all, that that brownie cookie is rich on its own. I had some with coffee earlier, and it went really well with the coffee. But I tell you what, with this wine, this this rosé, you're talking about sugar on sugar, and sugar. Whoa, kids, don't try that at home. You're you're going to be bouncing off the walls. Uh, Whoa, I, and that's all I'm going to try of that. I, I think I'm done with that. Ooh, that's, whoa, rich. It's good. It was really, really good, but just way too rich. Way too rich. Okay, so that's all I got tonight. For fi my final uh, wine review summary, this, what we're drinking is, once again, what we're drinking is, this is a, a La Sans de Vin. This is 50% uh, Sasson, 50% Merlot. This is a rosé wine made in France, imported from France, uh, available from winestore-online.com. That's where you can pick it up. And uh, no, I'm not shilling for them, but it's, 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 I don't make anything. They're not paying me to say that, okay? Just, uh, that's just where you can get it because I couldn't find it pretty much anywhere else uh, online. So uh, it's pretty decent. It, is, uh, it starts off... Um, it, it has a few floral notes to it, not, you know, uh, not really on the nose, but I, I really f uh, smelled the pear and um, some strawberry on the nose, a little bit of that. And when I tasted it, I tasted pear, strawberry, and later on, as I got down to the bottle, some peach. Actually pretty good. It goes down pretty smooth. It's very light. This is very, very, uh, the complexion is very light also, but it's, it's a very um, light-bodied wine. It goes down very smoothly. It seems like it's fairly well. This is a 2019, by the way. I didn't say the year, but it's a 2019. It goes down uh, fairly well. It doesn't have a really super long finish, but it has a nice one. It has a nice one. It is dry. It's not sweet. It's dry. But it's uh, it's not real acidic, at least to me. It's not. It's it's uh, it's actually pretty decent. I would drink it again. I'd buy another bottle um, for $5.99. That's kind of hard to beat. For, for this rosé, $5.99 is actually a pretty good bargain. I would have expected, I saw it around uh, $9, $10. Uh, uh, well, it was uh, like 8 something for, for $8.20 for whatever the 20 is for uh, uh, euros. Uh, I think that translates to around $10, somewhere around that, in that area. And I've been told that it's kind of a $10 wine. Could be, but they were selling it at one store had it for five ninety nine a bottle, so I snapped one up, and uh, uh, yeah, I think it's 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 good, pretty good for five ninety nine. I've I've had, I've had worse rosés for five ninety nine. I'll tell you that. So uh, definitely uh, five ninety nine. That's actually I I think it's actually kind of bargain for that. It's kind of a bargain for that uh, for this rosé, La Sans du Vin. Pretty decent wine. Anyway, so that is my final review for tonight. I'm glad you joined me here. I want to thank everyone for joining me here on the wine stream tonight live. Uh, let's check Twitter. Anything on Twitter? I can't see anything else going on Twitter at the moment. Oh, two notifications. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Uh, that is... Uh, oh, Troy. Troy, I'm glad to see you in, in, in the chat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. 
Uh, thank you. Wine Lovers Box and Wine Routes. Um, thanks, uh, thanks very much for, for joining me as well. On Twitch, I want to thank Captain Sweet Swan. I'm glad you're here. It's good to see you here. Battle Daddy 19. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll see if I can uh, grill a hot dog to try with a red. It'd have to be a, a pretty, pretty, uh, man, it'd have to be a red with some tannins in it, I think. But well, maybe we'll try that. Let me try that. Good. Uh, thanks for the, for the, uh, for the recommendation. And uh, on uh, nothing going on on YouTube, but uh, thank thank everyone for I, th I thank everyone for being with me on Twitch. All oh, the Walrus King uh, says, "What's good, Rick? Sounds nice." Oh, uh, thanks for being here, the Walrus King. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, I also want to, uh, yeah, he says, uh, "Sounds nice." And, and uh, well, well, we'll uh, I do recommend this wine. I do. And uh, let's see, everyone who joined me on uh, Facebook, uh, my lovely wife, Chi. Molly, I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad you're here. Don't be a stranger. Stephanie, it's always great to see you. And Ed, my good friend, Ed, uh, you're, an, uh, you're an anchor for being here. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, my, oh, my sister Gina's joined us in the chat here. I made it for the last, she says, I made it for the last minute. Oh, well, I'm glad you made You know what? Better late than never, right? Better late than never. Savoyas, we're, we're, we're known for, for, I don't even want to go there. <laughs> I don't even want to go there. Yeah, we're known for, for our late entries. But you know what? When we get there, we, we, make, a, we make an impression, don't we? <laughs> we always make a good impression. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we may be late to the party, but when we get there, we make that party, don't we? <laughs> we make it count. And Gina says, I do know there are some good ones, but red is my favorite. Yeah, Gina says I'm not. Though I'm not a rosé fan, I do know there are some good ones, but red is my favorite. And um, yeah, there, th this is actually pretty decent rosé. I, I do appreciate. It. By the way, I, I appreciate all of you being uh, here with me tonight. Next week, well, it's kind of up in the air. I, you know, I'm going to call one store and see if they have anything new. But there are a couple of things. Oh no, wait, I've already got it. The Wacamole. The Wacamole. There's a Wacamole here that also came from there that was recommended a long time ago, and I resisted it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. Next week, we're going to do the Wacamole. It is a, uh, it's a red. I think it's a cab. I, I, I forget right offhand, but I think it's a cab. Anyway, it's, it's sitting over there. We'll, we'll open that one next week and see how that goes. I might try Black Box Vine at some point. That was another recommendation from a viewer. Uh, black box fine. I don't know. Uh, it, it might be a while before I can get one of those in, but we're going to try that. Also, some upcoming things. I do want to try uh, ordering some tests. I, I did promise this early, the very beginning of the year, the very beginning of season two here, that I was going to uh, review some of these wine clubs. And uh, it's getting late uh, in the year for that. And uh, unfortunately, the COVID-19 thing kicked in, so it kind of threw some things off uh, scheduling-wise. But, yeah, I'm going to, to try reviewing. I'm going to make an order from uh, one or two wine clubs. We're going to give that a try and see what these wines are like and see if it's really worth getting into these wine clubs. I, I've, I have had people ask me about that, and uh, I think I want to address that, and I, I think we will. Uh, very shortly here in this this fall coming this fall anyway uh, I want to thank you all for being here with me and uh, I, I, I do appreciate each and every one of you uh, whether you're on Twitch on Facebook on YouTube Periscope or, or uh, Twitter wherever you are and on the website drinkwithrick.com um, that uh, that means a lot to me and um, I hope that, that this has been entertaining, and uh, we'll try to continue that trend. And please, once again, be here next week. We're, gonna, we're going to do the world premiere of The Analyst. It's going to be the world premiere of The Analyst film. And I think you'll really enjoy that. You don't want to miss this. You really don't. Uh, it's going to be fun. So, having said that, thank you once again for being here with me tonight. Please, I want to ask you that you please do not drink and drive. Drink from the comfort of your home, your apartment, your studio, your uh, your hotel room, wherever you are. Drink, drink from there. Call an Uber. Call, call a Lyft if you need to. Do not drink and drive. Call a friend. Call a family member. Whatever. 
do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive. Please do not text and drive. That never ends well. Because I want you to have a great week. And I want you to have a safe week. And I want you to join me here next week. So we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.